How you doing guys? Welcome back to another Medic Mind Gamsa video. My name is Harry and today we're going to be looking at the section 3 physics topic of waves. So we have a couple of standard lesson aims that we look to complete here in these lessons. So the first is to develop a strategy. So we're going to have a look at a couple of questions in this session just to get your kind of head thinking about questions that relate to waves um, and your understanding of that topic. We're going to revise the theory of waves. So I'm going to have a look at a few questions, kind of incorporate things, um, you know, such as light reflections, incidents, rays, reflective waves, uh, waves and, and things like that. We want to learn the relevant equations. Um, as always, this is something that is an aim that's always put in. If there are equations that you're unfamiliar with, then getting familiar with them. Again, as I always reiterate in these videos, it's not so much about learning off every equation but that you understand where the different uh, components and variables of each equation are coming from and of course the sample questions i'm going to tie everything in as i often do with some sample questions so let's jump straight in so how do i approach questions involving waves well this is a very fundamental co concept when it comes to physics uh, you'll see it time and time again um, and often it's very important for example in everyday life uh, when we think about um, for example scanners you might see in hospitals you might think about um, alpha rays gamma rays you might you know light rays of course as we see um, everything we see uh, involves certain light rays so um, or the ability to see certainly involves those light rays um, so it's a really really important concept but equally it's not too difficult to understand so let's have a look so a wave is sort of the transfer or the movement of energy in some way, right? So it's, um, you know, from, from one point to another, um, you know, sound and light, um, you know, travel as waves, right? And so if we think about the concept here, um, you know, and, and look at the slides here, so we have waves, right? A wave is, is, is energy and momentum, right? Because if you think of, I mean, you, you, your imagination can think about what a wave is, right? A wave is sort of traveling in this, in this kind of periodic way, as you, as you can imagine, and from point A to point B. And, the, and there's an energy level that often goes like that. And as I talked about with sort of scanners or something like that, you might see that wave as a photon, right? Um, photon emission or light emission. And um, it's really important as well, one of these basic, uh, a very basic scientific experiment you might often have seen in, in school when you were much, you know, at a very early stage, even in sort of primary school curriculums um, is uh, the bending of light in a prism and we'll see some of those concepts uh, employed here in some of the stuff we look at um, but it's the idea that different wavelengths of light for example bend differently um, if, if light is is bent uh, as a result of, of changing uh, changing medium through which it travels uh, right because that changes the speed with which it travels um, and so that's really important. Um, it, it's a really basic idea of you think of a white light coming in and then you separate the light and you see almost this rainbow effect. Um, so a really important idea. And, and so understanding just that, again, a wave is is this energy and it, and, and it has momentum, in other words. Um, and there are various uh, equations associated with waves. Waves. Um, which can often be useful in answering questions um, and, and we may come across a couple, but it's important to just think about waves F, you know, as a concept first and we can worry about those things uh, as they come up. So a quick reminder um, to brush up on, uh, you know, the, the wave characteristics and um, periodic motion and mental maths. OK, so um, just thinking about, again, as always, there are going to be mathematical questions when you're thinking about physics. So just think about the mathematical concepts that we've come across to this point. Also think about periodic motion in the sense that, as I say, you, you have kind of um, the, the period, the periodicity or the, the you know, um, waves with which travel in, in kind of periodic motion. Right. That can be important when you're looking at different things like um, the amplitude, the frequency, in particular, the frequency uh, of waves. Right. Because um if if they you know if, if something has a quite a, a long or a, a large uh large wavelength that it would have maybe a a low frequency and therefore it might bend less in medium so it comes into play in some of the ideas that you'll see here so again just have a think about some of those ideas if you haven't already and take the time to do so before we tackle some questions so we're going to jump straight into a couple of questions that will hope uh hopefully kind of 
help you think about some of these ideas that we've talked about um, or, or some of the ideas that, that kind of often come up in waves. Uh, and the first of which is, of course, uh, Snell's law. So according to Snell's law, let's have a look at question one. Um, the wavelength of light is inversely proportional to the refractive index. A prism is used to separate white light into a rainbow, as I talked about with that experiment. Which color of the visible spectrum would have the smallest angle of refraction? Note that angle of refraction pertains to the angle between the ray and the normal. So I've name dropped a couple of concepts that you'll see in waves there. Pause the video, think about that question, and I'll tackle that in a moment. So hopefully what you can see here is that um, you've thought about the idea of light or white light traveling to a prism. Um, and I might have mentioned something before about uh, the frequency and how that affects something bending uh, through a prism. And indeed it is that the frequency um, with which something travels affects it, uh, how much it, it will bend. So, um, and there's a proportionality there, right? So the higher the frequency, the more it will bend, right? Uh, and that's any given uh, color of light, right? So we know the colors of light pertain to particular wavelengths of color, right? Um, and one thing to note is that the uh, kind of visible wavelengths are roughly between 400 and 700 nanometers. Um, and so within that range, we have a spectrum and that spectrum pertains to all the colors that we can see. Now, all this question is really asking for you to think about um, the wavelengths of, of a couple of different colors. Um, and also to note, uh, we have name dropped things like, uh, for example, the normal line. So understanding that the normal line pertains to the surface. For example, if I have a surface here that the light is traveling through, if we think of this as the surface of the prism, right? Uh, and I, if say I have some green, you know, I have some green light coming in here, right? The normal refers to this blue line here, or sorry, this blue line here. And the normal is a perpendicular line to the surface with which the incident ray is hitting. Um, and it's a, in particular, it's a normal line at the point with which the incident ray makes contact with the surface. Um, and it's an important one because the angle of incidence is actually the angle between these two things here. It's this uh, angle in, um, this angle in red here. So that's your instant angle. So important to think about that concept. Um, it, you know, some people might think of an instant ray, oh, it must be between the surface and the ray, but it's not. Um, it's considered normal to the surface um, and the ray itself. So in this case, uh, again, as I said, um, a, if you have uh, if you have a higher frequency, you bend more. And the reason why is if you think about it, here's a high frequency, for example, here's a high frequency ray, right? I'll draw it in green. And here's kind of a lower frequency, right? And if you think about it, per wave, right? So we know that the wavelength is much longer here, right? The wavelength is much shorter here. So per, I'm getting a lot more waves traveling within this confined space than I am with the larger waves. And so what that means is I'm spending more time, that there's more waves within that are bending in this other medium, as it were. And that actually means that it's gonna bend more. Whereas if I have less wavelengths of that light within this space, I don't bend as much. Um, and so that's just an idea of how frequency relates uh, to um, to refraction, if you will, um, or to how much the, the light will bend itself. And so in this case, um, by that concept, um, and it's not something you have to learn off necessarily all the colors, but it is helpful to have a rough idea of, of where the where the colors sit there um, and, and, you know, uh, the, the kind of different wavelengths of, of various phenomena like radio waves or gamma rays, alpha rays, um, you know, um, X rays, things like that. Okay. Um, in this case, it's red, right? Red is on the spectrum as, as the longest, right? The upper is kind of 700 n, 700 nanometers of, of a wavelength. So it's a larger wavelength. Therefore, the frequency would be lower because the length of a wave is larger, right? So, um, uh, that that kind of clears that concept up there. And indeed, it is red. So the visible spectrum, make sure you know the colors of the visible spectrum and their orders. So 
It is useful to know, as I say, you don't have to know every single color. Um, it is a spectrum. There are many, many, many colors in there, but just have a rough idea. Your reds, your greens, your blues, um, just your violet, particularly the either ends of it. You've got violet and, and red at either end. So just understand those. Uh, and as I said from the beginning, um, the visible spectrum uh, is from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. So have a good understanding of that range. Okay, so which of the following statements regarding reflection is incorrect? And take a moment now to have a go at this question. We'll tackle it in a moment. So hopefully you've had a chance to have a look at this question. Um, so which of the following statements regarding reflection is incorrect? F there's a f couple of things we want to look at here. First of all, Answer A says the angle of incidence and reflection are equal in diffuse reflections. Now, um, in diffuse reflections, the, the incident ray can be scattered at many angles. Um, but it would be fair to say that the, the angle of incidence and reflection are equal, right? Because the angle of, the angle of incidence um, and reflection, right, for reflection to be... Uh, for it to indeed be reflection, um, your your angle of incidence uh, would would typically be the same as as that of the reflection. So that in theory makes sense. Um, answer C says the angle of incidence is found by subtracting the angle made with the surface from the normal. Now that would be fair. Um, the angle of incidence found by subtracting the angle of incidence made with the surface normal. So what that essentially is saying to us here is. The angle of incidence is found by subtracting the angle made with the surface angle made with the surface from the normal. So in other words, here's the angle made with the surface. If I subtract that from the normal, if I subtract this here from the normal, what do I get? Well, I end up with this angle here. And as we know, that is the angle, as I said from the previous question, that is the angle of incidence. So that's actually a fair way of doing things. B says the angle measure between the ray and the surface is always the same, um, of the same magnitude as the angle of reflection. Now that's, that's not true. And here's why, right? We know that from reflection, the angle of incidence here will be the same as the angle of reflection, right? So this is your angle of reflection. This is your angle of incidence here. And it's saying these are the same, but that means, right, if they're the same, this angle here and this angle here, these 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 angles could well be this would be the same in theory, right? But this angle, to say that this angle would be the same as this angle is is not true because my ray can come in at any angle here. So it's not actually fair to, to say that that would be the case. And therefore, B is incorrect. And this question is really, again, just, just tackling the basics of, of waves and, um, and their interactions uh, with surfaces and different mediums. Um, basic concepts, definitely something to brush up on if you haven't already thought about it. And indeed, it is answer B. So straight into question three, pause the video if you want to have a go, and we'll tackle this in a moment. Okay, so I hope you've had a chance to have a go at this question. So this is just talking about internal reflection. Now, to make this easier rather than kind of going through each of the um, answers here, what I'm just going to show you is, so let's, let's just have a quick chat about what is internal reflection, right? So this is when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, right? So if I just draw this out here, um, if I have... Uh, a surface like this, right? So when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, um, it, what it means is that beyond which, right? So just to say that there's a critical angle for different, uh, different, uh, different mediums that, that it might flow through, that the light might fro flow through or the wave might flow through. And essentially um, with regards to the critical angle, so the light itself, right? If we, if we think about internal reflection, what needs to happen is a couple of criteria. As I said, um, so your angle of incidence greater, so it has to be quite large. In other words, if you think about it, if I have two angle of incidence here, right? I have one like this and I have one like this, right? This is quite small, right? This is an angle of incidence and this is also an angle of incidence, right? So the green one you can see is larger and you can see that at a point, we're going to reach the point where 
the angle of incidence is large enough such that we actually get we flow along this way right um and so that's your critical angle right it's the angle at which we're going to flow essentially across the surface and so if we have an angle of incidence greater than the critical angle then we end up with internally reflecting the light isn't actually moving through and so if we look at some of the answer options that we were given here, it says the total internal reflection occurs when the light travels from a higher index of refraction to a lower one. Well, in actual fact, the most important thing to think about here is that um, which of the following statements is true. So the other thing is that another criteria for internal reflection is that the the light has to travel from a, more, a, a larger dense medium or a, um, a more dense medium to a less dense medium. And the reason why is because that is the case where um, the light will bend away from uh, the, the normal, right? So if we, consider, uh, if we consider within the medium, this red line or this red line here to be your normal, so what happens is if I take the blue line and I consider something whereby um, the, the we go from, let's pretend in the blue case, we're going from a less dense to more dense. In this case, the blue would bend towards the normal, which is this red line as I talked about, right? So the blue light is bending towards this normal because we're going from less dense to more dense. Um, however, if I take the green case, what happens is I'm coming in, as I said here, but then I'm going to move away from the normal, right? And that's just a concept that you need to understand, right? When waves are traveling from two different mediums, if we go from a higher dense medium to a lower dense medium, as I said, that enables the movement away from the normal, which is something that you need in order to facilitate. As you see, as we gradually increase that incident angle, we're gradually moving towards this state here of internal reflection uh, beyond the critical angle. So you can see how that's a really important consideration. And so what that means is that if the angle of incidence is larger then the critical angle, the light will not experience total internal reflection, right? So you take home points really. Um, understand waves, it's a basic topic, it's a small topic in physics and it's something that hopefully you shouldn't have to spend too much time on really. Um, I've kind of, we've really only burst the surface here of some some interactions with surfaces because that could be quite a popular, um, quite a popular style of question. You know, think about Snell's laws, for example. Um, it's, as I say, it's not a large topic, it's something that, um, even for example, in my my undergrad in physics was done very very early on, um, and really not, um, certainly these concepts I, I'm talking about. So so the it's interactions with surfaces and things like that, the basics are covered very early. So, um, it, it should be fair enough for you. Uh, work on the mental maths is just you know we know this. It comes up time and time again in physics that the basic maths where you might be given questions like this and they might throw some figures, um, some some di some figures or or some numbers in there that to throw you off and just be prepared to maybe do some basic calculations, but just, again, frame your understanding around uh, around the concepts that you already know and go from there rather than worry too much about the maths that might come up. And finally, practice questions as we always need to do in order to, to, to get a better understanding of these topics. Guys, that's the lesson complete. I hope that you have gained a little bit of uh, knowledge from this one, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks a million. Are you sitting in the GAMSA and want to improve your score? Click below and check out the Medic Mind GAMSA online course. You'll get access to over 15 hours of GAMSA tutorials covering all the material that you need to maximize your score. Don't miss out on this incredible offer. Click below and get instant access to the course.